Hello everyone, Stanley here and welcome back to another Minecraft video. Minecon is just a couple of days away on October 16th and of course during Minecon we once again get to choose which mob will be added in the next Minecraft update. This year we have three new options all of which are passive mobs, the glare, the allay, and the copper golem. In today's video I'll be showing you absolutely everything you need to know about these three mobs to help you choose which one you want to vote for. There is a lot of additional details details about these three mobs floating around on the internet from various different developers on Twitter, on Reddit, and on Discord as well. So there's actually a lot of stuff that we know about these mobs that were not included in the little teaser videos. So first up we have the Glare. This is kind of an Oscar the Grouch flying bush monster that will fly around your world and help you find dark spots. Whenever it finds a spot dark enough for monsters to spawn, it will begin getting very grumpy and angry while also being adorable and cute at the same time. So this mob can help you find areas that monsters can spawn in, it can help you spawn proof your areas, your bases, the glare isn't going to be as useful for spawn proofing as you might think because keep in mind monsters will only spawn in absolute darkness as of 1.18 and beyond so they need a light level of zero. This means that a very dim redstone torch is now as powerful as a regular torch from 1.17 and regular torches spawn proof an absolutely huge area now. So if you're planning on spawn proofing your caves and stuff you really don't need that many torches and you can always just spam down a couple extra of these things. Now if you plan on doing a lot of mood lighting and dark creepy areas then the glare would actually be helpful in telling you where mobs can spawn and your creepy dimly lit builds. There's also of course the argument that the F3 screen can tell you the light levels however that's not really an option for bedrock edition and as you can tell it is very difficult to tell between light level of 1 and light level of 0 especially because the light levels blend together so smoothly. So yeah the glare could could legitimately be kind of useful for these very dark areas. Keep in mind there's also no indication that the glare can fly through walls or blocks to help you find caves and things like that. It's not like a vex, it's more like a bat. So there are some legitimate uses for the glare, especially in things like mini games and maps and adventures and just general caving. It could help you find very dark areas where there might be like extra loot or maybe secret passages or something like that in your mini game maps. And overall, there is a lot of really interesting things to be done with the glare. But in my opinion, it's not the most useful one of the three. Mob number two is the Allay. This is another flying mob, but this one is very interesting because of its interactions with items, item collection, and item sorting. So this is a flying mob that you can give one item to. It will then fly around the world looking for more items of that same type that are already laying on the ground. If it finds any items on the ground, it will pick them up and either bring them back to the player or drop them off at a note block that you have linked it to. This little guy is a music fan. It can kind of dance around and interact with note blocks in interesting and technical ways. And overall, it's just a cute little fun mob. We have a lot of additional details about the Allay thanks to Ulraf and King Bee Dogs on Twitter, Discord, and Reddit as well. So the Allay has two item slots in its inventory. One item slot is for the sorting item that you give it. So if you give it one cookie, it will then fly around the world looking for other cookie items on the ground. It can then pick up to 64 cookie items and bring them back to you or to the note block. Now, if you give it something like an Ender Pearl, it will look for ender pearls on the ground and be able to pick up 16 ender pearls. Now you could also give the Allay something like a diamond pickaxe and then it would fly around the world looking for any diamond pickaxes on the ground and be able to pick up one at a time. This means that we can have non-stackable item sorters using the LA for things like totems, saddles, armors, weapons, and tools, possibly even enchantment books and potions, and so many other things. Being able to sort non-stackable items is going to completely revolutionize storage systems and sorting systems in so many ways, and it's something that we've really needed for a long time in Minecraft. So not only will it revolutionize non-stackable item sorters, but 
it also means that early game farms won't need any form of hopper mine cards or rail systems or big hopper grids or anything like that. You could really save a lot of resources by using one allay or several allays to go out and collect your items for you and bring them back to your storage and sorting system. Overall, I feel like this is definitely the funnest one, but then again, I love storage and sorting and technical Minecraft in general. So there's a few misconceptions going around about the allay. First of all, the filter item that you give it, like your one cookie, it will hold on to that forever until you take it away or give it another filter item. It does not duplicate items, it only finds items that are on the ground. So like if you dig a giant hole, all those items that are on the ground it will be able to collect. The allay cannot break any blocks, it cannot access any inventories like chests. The allays also don't fly into unloaded chunks or work in unloaded chunks and they are not a chunk loader either. So if you want them to do their job, you will have to stand in the area, of course. The LA also has a lot of really interesting capabilities for mini games and maps. Like if you're teaming up with one of these LA's, it could go ahead and grab you items from inaccessible areas where the player could never get to it, bring you that critical item to help you bypass the level or just so many other possibilities there is seriously a lot of interesting things to be done with the LA and it's my personal favorite and mob number three is the copper golem this is a craftable golem and just like the iron golem or the snow golem it will wander around your world and occasionally press buttons as well it can oxidize over time if you don't wax it and eventually it'll freeze in place and become a type of statue you can of course scrape off that oxidization with an axe and return it to life and restore it to a proper golem the copper golem also comes with copper buttons as well, which I would assume are going to be basically the same as regular buttons. When it comes to the copper golem, there isn't really that many additional details to know about it, besides the fact that as a redstone randomizer, it's more of a novelty and more of a unique way of doing things. There is plenty of absolutely dead simple very straightforward and reliable randomizers that we've had in Minecraft for ages, such as simply having a chicken in a little 3x3 or even a larger area with a pressure plate. As you can see, he steps on it and steps off of it randomly and that gives us a signal, or you can use an entity list one such as this little contraption right here, which could definitely be made smaller. This just has a dropper with a stackable item and a non-stackable item. Depending on which one gets shot out, you will either get an output out the left side or out the right side so if you're voting for the copper golem because it gives you randomness um well we we kind of we kind of have that so just like the iron golem and the snow golem there is no indication that these guys will follow you around like a companion or a pet imagine them just kind of wandering around your base possibly fighting mobs i guess if they're going to be following the other golem characteristics and then they will occasionally pathfind to a button and press it of course, there is the fun side effect that because these guys are made out of copper, over time, the copper golem will go from the nice shiny colors and eventually oxidize and turn into a statue like this color right here. Now, this does have use in various different builds and lore-related things. However, you're going to need to, like, trap your golem somewhere where you want it and then wait for ages for this guy to oxidize, and then you will have a statue right there. I don't imagine you'll be able to move these guys once they are statuified, but you'll be able to scrape off that oxidization and turn it back into a live golem. You can of course wax these guys as well, and then they won't oxidize at all. And of course, when it comes to them being a statue, they're always going to be the same size, shape, and color with a possible different looking directions. So you might be able to like rotate them a little bit, but that's kind of just a random thing based on when they oxidize. So there's kind of a lot of caveats when it comes to using these guys either for redstone or for decoration. So that is basically everything that we know about these three mobs as of right now. We won't know more about them until one of them is chosen as the winner by the community and Mojo starts working on them in the 1.19 snapshots and betas so hopefully this video has helped you make a decision now as for the community so far basically as far as i can tell everyone absolutely loves the la myself included
included. My Twitter timeline is like 95% LA supremacy. And I even did a poll on Twitter and on the community page here on the YouTube channel. And all four times that I did it, the LA absolutely dominated. So I guess that's all there is to it. But... Please don't let anyone tell you what to vote for, don't let any YouTubers make convincing videos or, you know, just tell you straight up what to vote for. Make your own decisions based off of what you want in the game, what you want to play with, and what you like to do in general. Also, keep in mind that any mob that does not make it into the game with this vote will be put back into the ideas library and it might be introduced into Minecraft in a future update. Furthermore, this vote is going to take place on Twitter. If you haven't already, please go and make a Twitter account now. That way you don't miss out on the vote. Make sure you follow the at Minecraft Twitter and keep your eyes out for the vote. There's going to be two rounds of voting. And while you're there on Twitter, also make sure to follow this handsome and funny guy called at Silent Whisperer. He's a great person all around, and I'm sure he's going to appreciate the shout out. So tell him where you came from if you do decide to follow him. <laughs> so while I got you here, I also want to talk about Minecon as well. What do we want from it and what are we going to see? I put up a vote a couple of days ago on the channel with update ideas, and it seems like the vast majority of people want an end update. Personally, I think an end update is pretty pretty likely. They completely redid the entire nether with the nether update. They redid the entire overworld with 1.17 and 1.18. So it follows that an end update is likely. The Minecon trailer also of course has a bunch of endermen in it, so they're kind of teasing us in that way. But the Minecon trailer also mentions quadromorphic endervision, pillager rated sound, and beacon broadcasting along with 444 and of course quadromorphic. So there's kind of a lot of fours going on and in general a lot of cryptic things. All of this stuff is going to make a lot more sense once we actually know what the update is. They're always very cryptic with these trailers, but it does make sense once we actually actually know what the update is. So who knows what Mojang is actually going to do. Mojang does have a long history of completely surprising us with random updates that no one was expecting. And overall, I'm just excited to see what they got in store for us. So hopefully you learned something about the three new mobs in today's video, and hopefully you can make yourself a nice informed decision based on what you want to see in the game. Please vote for what mob you want included in Minecon, not what some random YouTuber tells you on the internet. It is Minecraft after all, and no matter what mob gets added, it's going to be a fun time either way. So just vote for what you want and what you think will be the funnest. If you enjoyed today's video, then leave a like. It helps the video and the channel a ton. If you're new here, then consider subscribing so you don't miss more Minecon content and otherwise i'll see you guys down in the comment section and in the next one and then there was la supremacy